thank you everybody for, for joining. We are so thrilled to be here at SANCAL. Um, and thank you to the team who put this wonderful event together. We've been working with Dervashi and Shada's on the line and Siddharth and we just appreciate the, the whole event and, and having us here. Um, so welcome to the session. My name is Grace Earl and I'm a senior associate on the IRS Plus and IMM team at the GIN. I will do some uh, quick introductions of the, the speakers on the line and then we'll go ahead and get started with the session. Um, I am also joined and have the pleasure of being joined by my colleague, Rachel Bass, who is a senior manager on the research team at the GIN or the Global Impact Investing Network. Um, and we have two investors on the line today who will share their uh, you know, real world experiences with measuring impact and uh, benchmarking performance. Um, and first we have Nikki Pelzer, who is an impact manager at Triados Investment Management. Um, and in that role, she coordinates the sustainability and impact management efforts of the organization. and also acts as the domain owner of the internal cross-functional impact management and measurement domain. Um, she is responsible for the implementation of sustainability related regulatory requirements, such as the US SFDR and taxonomy regulation. So thank you, Nikki, for joining us. Um, and I realized one note is that you are in the uh, master class from measuring impact to, to benchmarking performance. So if you're uh, hoping to join our master class, you're in the right place. Um, additionally, we have Genevieve Edens on the line. Um, and again, thrilled to be joined by our, our two investor um, uh, folks here. And Genevieve is the Director of Impact and ESG at Water Equity. And in that capacity, she develops policies and tools around IMM and is involved at all stages of the investment cycle. So we're really excited for her to share her experience. Um, and she has more than a decade of experience in impact management and, and research. Uh, so very excited to have Nikki and Genevieve here um, and also my colleague, Rachel, and I'll let them uh, sort of introduce themselves at the beginning of their, their sections as well. Um, and with those introductions, we'll, we'll go ahead and kick it off. So I do want to note that um, throughout the session today, we will ask questions and be sort of communicating via the, the chat box. Um, so uh, if folks are, are comfortable using that, we really encourage you to do so. Um, we'll ask questions as we go to sort of get to know each other and help us cover what's... Oh. Yeah, yeah, they're going to dance to the what dance? So we, yeah, yeah. we dance, dance, arts, and uh, and so sorry, uh, Grace, could you unmute yourself, please? There we go. Are we okay? Yes. Great. Um, perfect. So um, I, I will say, please do feel free to unmute if you do have a, a question. Um, but just to preserve the audio quality, thank you for, for staying muted if you're not um, asking a question. Um, and we will, uh, like I said, use a chat box to ask some questions and sort of get to know each other and make sure that we are uh, providing the best information to you today. That's, that's the most useful. Um, so to that end, and I, we'll jump into the agenda next to give an overview of the session, but if folks are comfortable with it and, and would like to add their name and organization and location to the chat box, we would very much welcome that just so everyone gets a sense of who is in the room and, and sort of again get to know each other a bit before we kick off the session. All right, and next slide please. The agenda for today. We will be moving, of course, from of course from impact management and measurement to benchmarking, um, and we'll start out with some motivation and foundational concepts to um, this this journey. Um, we will then move to the IRS Plus system, which is the generally accepted system for measuring, managing, and optimizing impact, and and speak a bit to how the system works and how it may help you in your impact measurement and management practice. Next, we will review COMPASS, which is the uh, proprietary methodology of, of the GIN for comparing and assessing impact. And lastly, we'll talk about impact performance benchmarking, um, something that we are very excited to be talking about uh, with you here today. And uh, we'll, we'll speak a bit about our um, progress in helping the industry move this forward and what we see kind of coming down the line in, in the future for the industry. So, why are we talking about impact measurement 
and benchmarking. Why does this matter? Why does it matter to us? Why, why might it matter to you? Um, well, at the GIN, at the Global Impact Investing Network, we have a, a vision and, uh, to, uh, uh, we aspire to create the world in which social and environmental factors are routine, re routinely integrated into investment decisions. So we we hope that one day the the world um, the capital markets are uh, such that investors are always considering those social and environmental factors when making an investment. Um, and impact investing, of course, can help pave the way to making this a reality. But only if investors like yourselves and and organizations like the GIM and Triodos and, and Water Equity are armed with all the information and, and resources to effectively do that, to, to effectively um, uh, do impact investing um, efficiently and, and purposefully as well. Um, so that is what our vision here is at the GIN. And uh, next slide, please. To that end, um, there is some good news that um, investors are integrating impact into their decision-making along with traditional investment considerations such as liquidity restraints, risk tolerance, and financial return requirements, and a few others that you see on the screen here. Um, so that is, that's the good news and, and working with the industry towards that vision. Um, that said, in order to effectively integrate impact into decision-making, investment decision-making, impact measurement and management uh, is needed. Um, so we'll move to the next slide and talk about what we mean by impact measurement and management um, and how we are uh, helping to, to push best practices forward within the industry. So impact measurement and management. And how does it relate to our discussion today? So impact measurement and management or IMM, this includes using processes and impact data to integrate impact considerations into investment decisions. So when we say impact measurement and management, we mean identifying and considering the positive and negative effects of one's business actions um, and, and the effects that they have on people and planet, and then figuring out ways in which to mitigate the negative and of course maximize the positive in alignment with uh, one's goals. So impact measurement and management is, is therefore iterative by nature and investors in order to implement a, a good IMM practice need those processes and, and data in, in place. Um, and ultimately, and where we'll, we'll go in this session um, is that more and better data is needed. So that was the, the impetus for thinking about how the GIN will help with impact performance benchmarking. Um, and we'll cover that more in depth during the, the second portion of this masterclass, but we'll start, start off with IRIS Plus and the standardization of impact data. Um, okay, we can move to the next slide, please. So creating your IMM practice. This is a very, very uh, kind of brief overview um, of what uh, creating an IMM practice may look like, but a good to sort of set the stage in terms of where the different pieces of this session uh, may fit in your practice and may actually uh, you know, help you improve and optimize that practice. So both IRIS Plus, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the generally accepted system for measuring, managing, and optimizing impact, and Compass enable investors to implement a robust IMM practice in, in different ways. They're, they're uh, complementary. So IRIS Plus enables the measurement of impact performance in a standardized and comparable way. And the COMPASS methodology enables comparison and assessment of impact performance. And then we'll, we'll move to the uh, benchmarking as well. Um, and so when we are, so we can have this frame in mind as we move forward with this, this masterclass today, that there is um, a, you know, a need for the standardized data and the, the comparability of impact data as well. Um, so the, the four steps that you do see on the screen here um, include setting impact goals and, and designing investment strategies. And you see the reset goals, um, again, because this really is iterative by nature and a, a cycle. Um, and often investors will start with the uh, problem the investment is trying to address, and then considering which pathway will produce the best chance of achieving those goals, um, selecting metrics and setting targets. So impact metrics should ultimately deliver investment decision information. Um, to allow you to 
learn and pivot when necessary and strengthen uh, the, the portfolio and investment strategy. And again, we'll go into Iris Plus and how that can help investors use standardized metrics. Measuring results, of course, gather data to, to um, relevant to your impact targets and figuring out how you're going to store and analyze that data. And then of course, continually learn, adjust, improve and communicate. Um, so this is uh, again, where the compass methodology and impact performance data can come into play to help you learn, adjust, improve and communicate. Um, we can hop to the next slide now too. I've been referencing Iris Plus and, and um, Compass. So a, a, just a very quick overview of Iris Plus. Um, again, the generally accepted system to measure, manage and optimize impact. And this is the, the system that, again, allows for that standardization of impact data through a few key features, including core metric sets or key indicators of, um, of impact, social environmental impact performance, um, a, a built-in evidence base, which can help uh, form an investor's theory of change um, and anticipate expected in, impact. Um, and this is a little bit about the, the system and the information that you and see in, in IRIS Plus, um, and we'll have, we'll go into this much more in depth in the IRIS Plus section, and we can move to the next slide too. Um, so in, while IRIS metrics have, have been in the market now for over a decade, so we um, have been, in 2009, uh, the IRIS catalog of metrics has was launched, and we have been developing and refining that catalog of metrics over the last decade plus. Um, and the IRS Plus system has been in the market for just over two years now. But investors are also increasingly demanding opportunities for differentiation uh, based on impact data and impact analysis. So you can see here um, the, what investors are asking for in the market. They're seeing gaps in infrastructure, particularly around impact performance and analysis tools. And this growing demand is propelled by a few different factors. Um, not an exhaustive list here, but uh, of course the market growth and impact investing, um, there is a business need. So impact investors do use that impact performance data or need impact performance data to capture business value. And also of course a global urgency that we, we are all aware of and a heightened focus on inequality and climate change. And so again, setting the stage for this, session today. And thank you again for joining. We will cover how these three pieces really can inform uh, a, a solid and efficient and purposeful impact measurement and management practice and address the existing market gap that requires these metrics analytics and um, actually using that impact data. So again, we have IRIS Plus, which will standardize that impact data. Interpreting the impact data sits squarely within the uh, Compass methodology, which uh, allows investors um, to understand and, and compare the impact performance data, and the benchmarks, which help investors actually use that data to drive and improve decision making. So we'll move from IRIS to Compass to benchmarking today. And before, and I, I'm realizing if my other um, my colleagues on the line, let me know if there's anything coming into the chat in terms of questions. Um, I, I see some chat, but of course the toggling is not always easy. So if there's anything I can answer, if you have any questions as we go along here, please do let me know. Um, and I will review the Iris Plus system and then pass it off to Genevieve to give a real world investor example of using the system. So if no questions, we can get into how do I measure impact effectively? Iris Plus, we started to review a few of the, the core uh, features, but a bit more in depth here. So Iris Plus is the generally accepted system to measure, manage, and optimizing impact. We uh, built Iris Plus, the GIN, in consultation with over 1,600 stakeholders at this point. So while we do manage the IRIS Plus system, this is absolutely an industry-wide effort. Um, this way we, we get all the great expertise that exists within the impact investing industry into the system, but also make sure that it's as useful and practical to investors as they are moving along their impact measurement and management journey. I also mentioned that we've built 
the system based on over a decade's worth of experience with the IRIS, core, with the IRIS map catalog of metrics. Um, so IRIS Plus has been an evolution from the catalog into a system and continues to house catalog of metrics, but has so much more than that, as you can see on the screen here. Key features of the system include core metric sets. So I mentioned those short lists of key indicators to help you track towards your impact folds. And these core metric sets are used in, in a way that allows investors to not have to go through the full catalog of IRIS Plus metrics, but be able to very easily uh, narrow down on a core set of indicators based on their impact goals. Um, there is also a, an evidence base. So this is a built-in evidence base based on the impact goal that you have chosen in the system. And that helps investors uh, inform their, their theory of change um, and anticipate expected in, impact. Um, another way to think about this evidence base too is really tying those activities within your investments to those intended long-term outcomes and impacts. So there's a built-in evidence space that allows you to make those connections without, with being able to spend um, less time kind of doing that, that research. Um, we also have practical guidance resources available to help investors advance their IMM practice, including use cases, how-tos um, along the investment cycle, uh, for example, how to conduct uh, conduct impact due diligence and build an impact portfolio. So all of those practical guidance resources are right in the system for you as you go through the information. And lastly, I will mention here that IRIS Plus is built in alignment with over 50 industry standards. So there are many, many tools out there that can help an investor. And as many of you on the line may know, uh, measure and manage their impact. And IRIS Plus aims to not recreate the wheel uh, in a sense, but bring all of those tools together in one place for you to reference, um, ensuring that what that IRIS Plus is, uh, while, when you're aligned to IRIS Plus, you are then aligned to other industry standards and sort of vice versa, that it's framework agnostic. So if you are using another framework that IRIS Plus can be easily integrated into your impact management and measure, measurement practice. And IRIS Plus, we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, again, IRIS Plus allows for this standardized comparability of impact performance. Um, and it was designed to solve the most common IMM needs as expressed by investors here that you see on the screen. First, investors cite the need for consistent agreement on and implementation of norms and principles. So IRIS Plus shows investors the, the how, if you will, of adhering and, and using those IMM norms and conventions. Next, clear and comparable data is needed. And I've said that, I realize many times already, but it's because this is so, so important and key to advancing an IMM practice. Um, gathering data in a, a consistent and comparable way allows to make those really um, efficient and again, purposeful decisions. So IRIS Plus shows about, um, investors how to, to measure, measure in a standardized way that paves the way for data consistency and comparability. And uh, lastly, investors have cited needing best-in-class resources to help set up and improve their IMM practice. So IRIS Plus, again, services relevant resources based on the chosen impact goal. Um, so based on the impact theme and the goal you've chosen in the system, IRIS Plus will service those best-in-class resources for you. And the next slide here shows the global reach and scale of the system. So we, again, thinking about the standardization and that is, is great and key, but also we need some uh, uptake and adoption of the system so that investors are all measuring in the same way to uh, again, pave the way for benchmarking. So here you can see that since our launch in May of 2019, um, there has been quite a, a an uptick in adoption and wide adoption of the IRIS Plus system across the globe. Additionally, at the, the bottom there, you'll see that not only investors use the system, but enterprises and other stakeholders do reference the IRIS Plus core metric sets and strategic goals uh, in order to advance their impact goals. Um, and again, I, I mentioned too that IRIS Plus launched in May of 2019, but it has been built on a decade's worth of 
work on the core metric set. So we're uh, really excited to see this global reach and scale and, and hope it continues as, as investors adopt uh, standardized ways of tracking their impact. Um, and with that, I will do a short um, demo here, look inside of, of Iris Plus to give an idea of what actually exists in the system. I've been talking about it a bit, but what does it actually look like and how can it actually help you? We will, actually we can go to the next slide please, Rachel. Um, and here uh, you can find um, general information before you even log into the system and, and it's a free and, and publicly available system. And before you even log in, you can, can see information about the standardized uh, or the uh, industry alignments I mentioned. You can find general info about IRIS Plus, access to materials that are, are up for public comment, for example, recordings of, of past webinars. And, and this is where you could sign in and create a profile um, uh, that, help, that allows you to access the information that I mentioned. So on the next slide here, you can see what a dashboard looks like after creating an IRIS Plus account and signing in. And you are able to set up multiple impact profiles based on specific impact themes and goals. Once you create one or more of these impact profiles, all of your profiles will be displayed here after logging in. And uh, for example, and as you see on the screen here, you may have a, an impact goal around agriculture and around gender and financial inclusion. Um, so here you can see that a, an investor has set up multiple impact profiles, or you can think of them as impact frameworks, and we'll dive into what exists under one of those frameworks. But investors are able to set up multiple frameworks in order to track towards multiple impact goals. And in order to set up one of these frameworks, and next slide please, the system will ask you for just a few um, pieces of information. And you may set up your profile name in a way that makes the most sense for you. Investors may align an impact framework with a fund or a portfolio or a specific investment. And then the system will ask you to select your impact priorities. Um, and you are able to start selecting those impact priorities based on either SDG or impact category. And on the next slide, you can see how the, the SDG alignment appears in the system. Um, and you can choose which SDGs or, or impact categories align, but either way, you will get to the same information. So this allows investors who have categorized their investments and their impact goals in different ways, both enter the system and get to the same, same resources that will help you measure and manage your impact. So on the next slide, you can see the impact categories, which are broadly um, sector uh, aligned, um, of course, with some lenses that you see here, such as diversity and inclusion and climate change and employment. But broadly speaking, you uh, these are roughly sectors, so you can think of impact categories in that way. Again, though, after you choose the impact category or the SDG, you'll get to the same information. Um, and the next slide, you can see that once you choose that impact category or SDG, you will then narrow down your impact priorities even further for, uh, via an impact theme. And under each impact theme, and the last layer to all of this is the strategic impact goal that best matches your impact approach. These strategic goals represent the most common invest investment strategies or goals as, um, as communicated by investors of each of these themes. So each one of the themes that you see that fall under an impact category have gone through a very robust stakeholder engagement process where we engage the industry globally to surface the most relevant information under those impact themes and then under those strategic goals. So when you do see these goals, again, they um, are, the, the system is absolutely managed by the, the GIN and we can help you navigate and answer any questions about the system, but it's really, really important to note that this is developed in partnership with the industry. So at this point, after you have input all of the uh, questions for your, for your impact profile, you will see this. This is your impact profile. Again, you could create as many as you'd like within the system. And this first tab here provides um, a high level summary of the investments of this theme and strategic goal. 
It also includes alignment with relevant SDGs that you can see there on the right hand side of the screen, saving you the work of doing this alignment yourself. So investors have noted that they use this alignment for their stakeholder communication or perhaps validate an alignment with SDGs, but either way, you're, this is up front and center right when you sign into your, or right when you view your impact framework. Um, and this is an example of one of the alignments that I mentioned with other commonly used frameworks and standards for measuring and managing impact. The next tab is an overview, which provides uh, research and stats and answers to key questions about your chosen strategic goal, all framed within the five dimensions of impact. So another commonly used impact measurement and management framework um, to which the IWIS Plus system is aligned. So for example, information about the current scale of the problem is provided along with who is most impacted by the problem, uh, what are the most relevant impact risk factors, uh, again, aligned uh, through the impact management projects um, definitions. And there are also illustrative examples in the overview tab of investments that sit under this um, impact framework just to kind of bring it down to earth and contextualize the information even more. And Investors in uh, who have used the Iris Plus system has have found this tab and this information uh, useful in multiple ways. So I've we've heard investors say that they this is helpful in aligning their investments with their impact goals. So we talked about uh, the, the fact that this shows you who is most impacted by the problem. Perhaps this section may be helpful just to do a, an alignment and a, a check that. Um, that the investments which you're investing in are, are most aligned with these impact goals. Um, or perhaps when responding to RFPs from funders, fund managers have, have cited that this is, is useful to pull information from this tab. But again, an overview of key research stats about the chosen strategic goal. And the next tab is a built-in evidence base. So here you can select the outcomes related to the uh, chosen strategic goal and see a list of relevant evidence about that outcome, all categorized by the rigor of study uh, according to the NESTA standards of evidence. So there's a, a link on this page as well that you can uh, click out and find out a, a bit more about the NESTA standards of evidence. But the idea of including those standards is that it gives you an idea of the rigor of study right off the bat. And this tab helps you easily find impact evidence related to those impact goals. And again, cutting down on the time spent finding that relevant evidence to think about a theory of change or logic model or how, how you are connecting your activities to those intended outcomes and uh, impacts. So investors have uh, noted that this really, really helps to cut down on that time and allows them to think through how those activities are ultimately impacting the end stakeholders that they, they do wish to impact. And the next tab here, um, the core metric sets, these are short lists of key metrics related to your chosen theme and strategic goal, as mentioned before. So you don't have to go through the full IRIS catalog of metrics. Here you will see they are aligned with the five dimensions of impact again, and this allows uh, investors to ensure that they are tracking all aspects and, and dimensions of impact um, using those IRIS metrics. So the IRIS, the core metric sets give you a starting point for what to measure so that you do again have this clear, consistent and comparable impact data for decision making. And there are pieces of the core metric set um, that do allow for some customization. So if you'd like to bring in another metric for, for example, you are able to do so within the system. And the next tab here just shows, um, and you can, there's this one, and then you can pop to the next slide right away showing the dropdown. So for each dropdown, or for each metric rather, you will see a dropdown. And this gives a very clear explanation of what insights the, this indicator helps to drive along with the IRIS data needed and exactly how to calculate against that indicator. So again, everything that you need to be able to collect this information is in one place for you and drop downs and additional links allow for digging into that information even more as you go through the core metric sets and other uh, parts of the IRIS Plus system. But here you will see that you get that calculation guidance, notes that may be relevant to the specific indicator. Again, all in, all in one place. 
And I mentioned you can click into detail uh, or you can click to find more detail about any IRIS metric. So each, each metric uh, is actually linked to quite a robust page of information about where that metric came from, other, um, other standards to which it is aligned, et cetera. Again, all to, to give you the information that you need at your fingertips. I mentioned that, um, of course, standardization is key, but there are metrics that will be unique to your specific investments. So IRIS Plus provides the option to add other metrics. Um, and it also gives this how is change happening section, um, which will allow for investors to track towards, again, that key, the key indicator, the outcome that you're, you're hoping to achieve. How are you getting there? So you will see um, metrics here around processes, um, stakeholder engagement, et cetera, that are helping you reach those impact goals. Um, and again, you can add specific indicators here that may be custom to your investment. So not a custom indicator, but bringing in an iris metric that may not be within this set of four metrics. And we have just a few more slides going through the system and then we'll bring in uh, Genevieve to talk about how water equity puts this into practice. Um, and here though, you can see that the guidance that I mentioned is right, right in your impact framework. So you have these how-to guidance pieces right at your fingertips to help you drive and improve your IMM practice. For example, there are, there are pieces of uh, guidance here you can see about alignment to the SDGs. Um, below there are how-tos about designing a, an impact portfolio, et cetera. And on the next tab, you will see that IRS Plus also does provide this curated list of other recommended resources. So these are, again, resources that have been surfaced by the industry during the theme development um, that may be helpful in as you're investing using this um, chosen strategic goal. And all core metric sets, uh, you can download and export them into an Excel. So investors have noted that this is helpful in, in communicating with investees or communicating with other stakeholders, but just a, a hopefully uh, easy way, or we've, we've heard from investors that this makes it a bit easier in some cases to track the impact giving this starting point of an Excel sheet. And that is, the quick overview of, of IRIS Plus, and, and again, you will come back to this homepage, your dashboard, if you will, of all your impact profiles created so you can easily toggle between all of the uh, impact profiles and grab the information that you need to go and then implement it into your practice. And then on the next um, uh, slide, and the, the last one we'll show here is just an overview of the IRIS Plus thematic taxonomy. So here you can see, and it's it's meant to show the um, the uh, how comprehensive Iris Plus is. So Iris Plus covers many many uh, categories um, and and many themes, and then the the little dots on the bottom represent those strategic goals. So the different impact frameworks, and this is to show again the comprehensiveness of the, the thematic taxonomy, and that you no matter what you are investing in, um, there, there is likely a, a goal that may be helpful for you in here. Um, and we also are always developing Iris Plus. So we'll talk a little bit about upcoming theme development. Um, and actually, I, I think at this point, there may even be a few missing lines on here because of recent launches of, of themes in the system. Um, but this is just to be illustrative of, of all of the coverage that the system has for your impact measurement and management needs. And with that, I have talked enough for now, and I will let Genevieve from Water Equity take over and uh, talk a little bit about how they use Iris Plus along their, uh, their investments. Thanks, Grace. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm Genevieve. I'm the Director of Impact and ESG at Water Equity. I think you could go to the next slide. That'd be great. Um, and so I'm just going to talk for a couple of minutes about how we have used Iris Plus um, and give one specific example. And actually, we worked with the, um, the gym team to put together a use case. So there is a whole PDF you can read that goes into a lot more detail than what I'm going to cover today. So if you're interested in learning more, you know, feel free to reach out to me directly. 
um, or that's also a really great resource. And there's lots of use cases on, on their website that really, I think, help lay out how investors approach the system. So totally recommend those. Um, so just a bit of background first. Uh, we are an asset manager. Um, we are exclusively focused on water and sanitation. So we invest to, um, to really promote household access to safe water and safe sanitation. We're a fairly young organization. We were launched in 2017, but we spun out of a nonprofit called water.org. So we come with lots of years of experience from that organization, bringing it into the impact investing space. Um, next slide. So coming from that, um, that really focused wash and nonprofit background, from the very beginning, water equity had impact integrated into all of our processes and across the investment life cycle. And I won't talk about each of one of these specifically, but really as we think about from you know, strategy development for investment strategies, all the way through pipeline development and then training of specific deals through actually stru structuring a deal and then eventually exit, um, we, we do use IRIS Plus. I think it really helps sort of guide, um, guide us in making sure that we are aware of what best practice is that we're really focused on what our investors are gonna be looking for and what our investees can track in a reasonable way and that we're aligned with the industry. So our approach typically has been that we sort of develop um, what is important to us as an investor based on what our goals are. And then we look at what the industry is doing by looking at IRIS Plus to understand and are we aligned with best practice? So that's how we approach it kind of at every stage. And today I'm gonna to talk mostly about um, due diligence because that's where a lot of this work happens is sort of trying to project what kind of impact a particular deal is going to be um, uh, giving to us versus another. Um, next slide, please. And I'm gonna to, to talk about one specific example and it's within this investment strategy that we have developed that actually has been sort of the, the, the primary focus of water equity since our founding, and that is investing into financial institutions that have water and sanitation micro loan products. So water equity, although we're called water equity, we actually invest um, debt and um, quasi equity right now. So we lend to financial institutions who then on lend that capital to individuals who use it to construct a toilet, to, to connect to a local um, piped water network, or to purchase an additional water source, maybe a, a rainwater harvesting system. Um, and having that microloan helps spread out that big upfront cost for that low-income low consumer over um, you know, more affordable monthly or weekly payments. Yeah. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, so can you go to the next slide? And I'll just pause maybe until Harley is on mute. There we go. Um, next slide. So when we are thinking about um, how to make sure we're aligned with Iris Plus, we definitely start first at our strategic goal. Um, we're lucky because we actually help them develop the strategic goal for WASH. So it's pretty clearly linked to what we care about. But I think going through the SDGs is also really helpful because usually you know, you've already aligned to a target or, an, or a specific SDG. And so going through that avenue helps you identify, well, where in IRIS Plus are there already really clear goals that are set up with all this information that are relevant to me? I would say, you know, there are probably some goals that you may have that are not in there yet, um, but there is a ton that's already been developed. And so the, I think the two pieces that we um, focus on are the evidence-based tab and then the core metric set. The evidence base is helpful because part of what, how we develop an investment strategy is really thinking about, um, you know, is this an, uh, an intervention to use sort of the nonprofit language? Is this, is this an intervention where there is proven ability to achieve the outcomes that we are seeking? And in some cases, you know, there is a growing evidence base. Maybe there hasn't been as much rigorous research. In other cases, it's a really strong evidence base. So we try to understand that from the outset because that also helps indicate to us how much, um, how much of our own resources do we really need to dedicate to understanding that link between our investment and that outcome that we're hoping to achieve. Um, and then the core metrics that 
um, really helps us understand, well, what are the indicators that would help us get to understanding whether that outcome has actually happened? What are the um, key pieces of information that we should look at across all of our investments related to that theme? Um, and how can we communicate that both to our investors and to our investees? Um, next slide. So I'm going to just talk through uh, an example. Um, and this is uh, a microfinance institution in India that, um, that we were working with that had developed a new water and sanitation microloan product. So this was a, a new um, product that had just been launched, I think, the year before. So it was kind of a, um, uh, an untested product in a lot of ways. And the way we start with the due diligence on the impact side is we go in with a lot of data that we're looking for and interviews that we're collecting. Um, and we sort of process all of that, analyze it, and it feeds into an impact score, an ESG score, and then um, targets that we set. So for every loan that we offer, there are associated um, impact targets that go along with it. And we use a lot of the information collected at due diligence to determine what those should be in negotiation with our investees. So we collect a bunch of information, including the metrics that you see on the slide, and it gets fed into those pieces of um, sort of ways of analyzing that data that we present to our investment committee. Um, next slide. So in this case, um, you know, this financial institution was pretty sophisticated. They had really good data systems. And so they had a lot of the information that we were looking for. You know, they they knew uh, the gender breakdown of their clients, where they were located. They had good data on their uh, operations, so the disbursements of their clients. They even knew what kinds of facilities their clients had been constructing and purchasing. One thing we look at is, you know, does the MFI follow up to know has that toilet really been constructed and um, or not? And so they did they did that follow up. Um, and they had that data within their system. Um, but what they didn't have was that key outcome metric. So they didn't have uh, that top row um, were clients provided with new access. So for example, was the client renovating a bathroom that they already had access to? Um, or were they, were they really moving up in their access? Uh, you know, water equity will invest in, in products where we're helping people maintain their access because that's also really important. If, if, if um, your toilet is in disrepair or if your water source is non-functional, then you've actually gone down in your access level. So maintaining access is important. But we also want to understand, are we actually helping people move up the ladder for water and sanitation? But they didn't have the service level type and they also didn't know whether people were actually changing. So this is a risk for us, but it's totally understandable. It's actually pretty rare that we would come in and they would have this ready for us. Um, so next slide. So we, we typically work with what we have um, and we take that information and we uh, turn it into our impact score. So our impact score uses the IRS metrics um, and then um, puts them together in, in categories that are more or less aligned with the, um, the dimensions of impact, those five dimensions that Grace mentioned earlier. So we knew that this, this company was really aligned with what we were looking for on, on who they were reaching. They were reaching low-income women in regions that were really underserved when it came to access levels for water and sanitation in general. We knew that they were providing kind of a medium quality product. In other words, they weren't getting people 24-7 access to um, really high quality drinking water. So they weren't providing that safely managed service, but they were providing um, toilets, and they were offering um, advice about how to construct them, and they were um, using local supply chains. So if that toilet had some issue or if it fell into disrepair, the person who could fix it would be around the block, not in a country really far away. Um, they were a pretty large organization, so their scale that they were able to achieve was high. Um, and we felt that the acceleration, so when we say acceleration, we really mean sort of what's the investor contribution to impact. So our, is our capital going to really catalyze additional growth, for example, or is our expertise in water and sanitation going to help them improve their product? Those kinds of issues um, was, was, was fairly good because we were coming in at an early stage and we could help shape their product. The issue we saw was this impact risk because we didn't have some of that data that we, that we needed. But we felt like the case was strong enough for us to invest despite that impact risk because of the lack of data. Um, next slide. 
So um, we invested a three-year loan with this company, and um, we tracked every quarter sort of their progress in disbursements. And we also did a survey with them because we wanted to better understand who their clients were and what kind of access they were getting through the loan compared to what they'd had previously. So um, we don't do that kind of investment in data collection with every um, company if we do it on a kind of strategic basis. And we're also lucky that we partner with water.org. So if, um, if they're collecting data, they will share it with us. So um, doing this kind of data collection can be unusual for an impact investor. Um, but we feel like it's, it's really important because it helps us understand one, you know, learnings about our portfolio as a whole. It helps us better understand that evidence base and make sure where really our assumptions can be tested. Um, but it also helps us understand particular deals and understand the impact of those deals. Um, so we found that um, not 100% of the clients had been accessing improved service, but a really high number, something like... Um, 75% had actually improved their service level. So that gave us really the confidence that not only had this um, MFI actually been able to hit their tar exceed their targets, I think, and reach uh, relatively high level of scale, they were providing a service that was um, connected to that outcome that we were seeking that was improved water and sanitation access. And if you look at the next slide, when we did that analysis for our impact score, you can see the second loan uh, our contribution to impact as an investor is lower because they're, they're already sort of off and running. So our capital isn't really what's going to make sure that they scale up this product anymore. It's already almost at scale. But that impact risk that we're seeing um, is a lot lower. So they scored better on the impact risk category. So their overall score was higher for us. Um, and then, you know, we we verify that the clients that they said they were reaching were who, who they thought they were and that the quality was sort of what we thought it would be. Um, so um, with that, I know I've talked over my time, but um, I'm going to, I think, leave it there and hand it back over to Grace. Yes, thank you so much. Um, and I think I originally went over my time, but we're still we're still on track, everyone, to get through the, the intended content today. Um, thank you so much, Genevieve, for sharing that. We're, we're, again, really excited to have you on the line. And I also, um, in the chat, if folks didn't see, I, I did uh, pop in the reference use case. So if you want to learn more about uh, water equity in general and, and how they align to IRS Plus, um, you can reference that. And then we will, maybe Rachel will do just a few minutes for, for q and I know we're, again, a little bit behind, but happy. I, I know we had a couple of questions. I'm sorry, I don't know if everyone can hear my background noise, uh, but happy to uh, take a couple of questions for, for either myself or Genevieve um, as it relates to uh, her alignment to Iris Plus or, or Iris Plus in general. Um, so if folks want to unmute, or I think there may have been one question in the chat, Rachel. Yeah, Grace, you've gotten one question um, already, which is around um, if there's a way to link the Iris Plus dashboards to existing systems that collect data, and if you could speak a little bit to that. Yes, absolutely. So that is a, a, a great question. So folks do this in a number of ways, but the first thing I will mention is that we recently released our first uh, version of uh, an API. So we, we have an API now that, that uh, you know, programmatically can work with data platforms um, and, and uh, tracking systems to integrate parts of the um, catalog of metrics. Um, and so we're looking for ways and continue to, to figure out how we will evolve that, including uh, impact frameworks. Um, and to that end, though, there's also uh, those Excel sheets, those downloads right now, it's a bit of a, uh, maybe a little bit more manual process at, at, at the moment, um, but those we've, we've heard from investors allow for that integration within data tracking systems. Um, and those are, I would say, are the two main ways of integrating right now IRIS Plus uh, into data tracking systems. Great. And Genevieve, one question that's come in for you is if you could speak a little bit to the role um, that you play alongside your investment teams as you're going through the process you outlined, kind of how, how all of this is staffed and integrated across various responsibilities. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I sit on the investment team, 
Um, but I don't typically work on deals. Um, I have, you know, I'll go to due diligence where we are short staffed, but typically our investment officers um, are responsible for collecting the information and analyzing it. And then I provide a review. So I'm more helping develop the tools and then making sure we have kind of a quality control and approval process internally for all of them. Great. Um, another question for you, Grace. Um, have you found uh, differences in uptake of Iris Plus among investors as compared to investees? And, and could you speak a little bit to that? Yes, yeah, so I will say a, a couple of things here. The um, we do have a, a as as shown on the, the uh, global uptake numbers slide before, uh, quite a range of stakeholders who do access the system for measuring and managing their impact. Um, but really, and and we do see. I mean, the system was built with investors in mind, so the the uptake by other stakeholders in the industry is really exciting, and we do uh, think about ways to ensure that it serves all. But uh, you know, the system was built to um, enable investors to, to measure and manage their impact. Um, so in, in that way, the integration into systems sort of related to the other question and uh, integration to systems and investor processes, we do um, at least anecdotally hear that greater uptake by investors. Um, and then it does trickle down to the investees, uh, of course, in, in various ways, but um, usually the, the uptake of all parts of the system, I, I suppose, if you will, we do see a bit of a greater uptake from Iris Plus as it was built for, for investors. And I think we'll take one more question now um, and move on to talk about Compass, but there will be more time for questions later on as well. So if there are others, please feel free to continue sharing them in the chat. Um, but our, our last question for now, um, back to you, Genevieve. Um, could you share a little bit more color about how you move from the impact data to the impact score? Yeah, we, we try to make our impact score as objective as possible because um, it's, it's a pretty fuzzy topic. And we wanted to have a really standardized way of assessing, of comparing deals to each other. So um, wherever we could, we tried to make really um, uh, database indicators for each category and so um, we actually we, we published um, our impact score framework in a separate um, handbook with impact frontiers so if you google impact frontiers and you look for the handbook you can find actually our whole score framework written out and so within each dimension there's maybe four to eight questions that are linked to metrics most of them that are iris aligned um, that then feed into the sort of the calculation of that score. It's a, and just, you know, developing the, the numbers, we felt like um, can get really, again, subjective. So the weighting of different elements and what the score adds up to, but what we find really helpful is comparing each dimension. So it's not necessarily that overall number that that's out at the end, but instead, you know, looking at who are they reaching, what's the scale, um, what's the, our investor contribution, and what's the risk, those kinds of things. Awesome. So I think we'll, thank you for that, Genevieve. And I, I think, um, Rachel, we can move on to the next section with that. And, and as Rachel mentioned, we'll, we'll um, Again, hold time for questions at the end as well. So do feel free to, to keep um, popping those into the chat, um, but I'll hand it over to Rachel. Great, thank you, Grace. Um, we've just learned so much about impact measurement and the metrics and the evidence. Um, and it would be easy to assume that having those metrics and that data is wholly sufficient to be able to compare impacts. Um, the reality is there's a little bit more work to do to make sure that the analysis is run in a way that's consistent um, and structured for comparability. And so that's where um, this next level of, of content um, really comes into play is helping to make sure that we're not only standardizing the measurements, but also standardizing the analytics um, in a way that's well suited for comparability of impact. Um, there's a lot of different things that you could compare impacts to. 
Um, one is looking at your own impact targets. So how am I doing compared to what I set out to do? Um, the second is looking at your impact over time. How am I doing um, compared to how I did last year? Third is looking at impact relative to various peer sets. Um, how am I doing compared to Grace, to Genevieve, to my, my various peers in the market? Um, and lastly is looking at impact as compared to the social or environmental challenge that you are trying to help solve. Um, how am I compare, performing as compared to the SDG that I set out to help advance? All of these provide different types of insights um, that have a lot of value. And there's been a huge amount of progress, um, especially in the first two, um, many of which have, have been um, accelerated through the development and the launch of Iris Plus. There's still a lot of work to be done on the last two. Um, and these two are especially challenging looking at peer groups and those external targets because you're looking at impact in differing contexts. And so that's where Compass, the methodology for comparing and assessing impact really comes into play is helping to understand um, how to make sense of impact in a way that's meaningful and rigorous and reliable, um, but also that accounts for the varied contexts in which investments are made and in which investees are operating. The development of Compass um, has been spearheaded by the GIN, but certainly not in isolation. Along the way, we've consulted with 367 people um, representing over 150 organizations globally, um, getting inputs and insights um, and real world perspective from small scale fund managers to large scale institutional asset owners, um, to foundations, um, consulting with the academic and monitoring and evaluation communities and a number of others. Um, this process has been extremely helpful at working through um, some of the nuts and bolts of the methodology and culminated in the release of Compass, which was published in May of this year. Um, Compass is publicly available on our website, um, so certainly encourage you to take a look there um, in case it can be helpful for you. And what it seeks to do is to collect um, industry know-how and guidance um, in an effort to help standardize those analytics and really translate metrics and data into insights. Um, all of which can be used to inform the various uh, choices and strategic decisions um, throughout the investment process. Um, Genevieve shared a really helpful mapping of the different stages of consideration of impact for water equity. Um, and Compass is meant to help um, support and inform each stage um, of that process. One of the foundational concepts to Compass, though, is this idea of investor contribution. And the, the investee, of course, um, the company or the enterprise is playing a really foundational role at driving towards outcomes. Um, and, and we um, really laud those, those companies for the great work that they do. Um, the investor also has a role to play. And this has been something that we've tried to unpack um, in more detail through Compass. Just to quickly run through the process, so as you all know, of course, the investor provides um, capital, but also other factors, um, the timing, the terms, the engagement of that capital into the investees who conduct a set of activities um, that generate outputs and ultimately outcomes. The way we are understanding investor contribution, particularly in the context of, of Compass, but also in the activities of impact investors globally, is this cycle, this feedback loop of understanding how the different inputs into an investee might inform um, the outcomes, and particularly those proportional outcomes um, that are occurring on the other end of those activities. What Compass seeks to do is to help us understand how to gauge that proportionality in a way that's meaningful, um, and then how to connect that to these various other um, activities that we can better understand the influence of um, certain terms of an investment, a longer horizon, um, a concessionary capital, better understand the engagement, um, the role that a board seat might play, or non-financial support and technical assistance, proxy voting, any number of other ways that you could engage with an entity. So all of this um, I share because it's really a foundational concept that sits underneath Compass and comes into play in each step of the process. Um, 
what this is meant to help do is to provide greater insight and clarity around how investors' choices really do influence um, impact performance. So with that, I'll transition us to the methodology itself. It's really four simple steps um, that, that look pretty similar to a general research process. Um, one thing that Grace shared in, in her remarks is that with Iris Plus, you, you kind of begin with the end in mind. It's really about what, what are you trying to achieve um, through your impact investments. With Compass, it's no different. Um, this is beginning with the end in mind. So starting the process by evaluating what choice you're trying to make or what decision is needed. Um, that, of course, informs each other step along the way. Then we collect standardized impact information, um, much of which you can find through IRIS Plus, um, conduct the analysis in the NSM three-step process, and then apply those insights back to informing those decisions that you need. A few key elements um, to all of this that are, are just helpful to note. Um, one is, as I mentioned, Compass really does try to address the context of both the investment, um, is it private equity versus private debt, um, the stage of business, um, the, the size of the capital at play, as well as the context of the investee, um, what country are you operating in, what's the type of product or service being provided, where does this company fit along the value chain, all of which help us to, to make sense of, of the insights that are being um, generated. Then we look at both the effectiveness and the efficiency with which um, these investments are generating outcomes. And I'll speak a little bit more to this in a couple of slides. And then lastly and critically, um, it's designed to gauge progress towards those latter two comparison points, um, peer groups and the broader external social environmental target. Um, this is really meant to help ensure that those global challenges that we're all trying to address remain central um, to the process and central to um, to the analysis. Um, that's really, at the end of the day, what, what all of this is all about. Moving um, into our steps, um, you'll, you'll gather this standardized impact information that reflects um, investment data, as well as the, the additional external data. Um, you'll see here context comes into play um, for that investment and investee perspective as well as in just understanding the social or environmental threshold. Um, so for example, the, the targets um, embedded into the SDGs around access to clean drinking water, around access to responsible financial services, um, climate targets to ensure that we continue to live within the planetary boundaries, um, and, and so on. You'll see the results information, of course, is critical, but can't really be interpreted in isolation of this additional um, information. Um, all of that could come from IRIS Plus. And then additionally, the evidence base, um, which again is a resource um, readily available through IRIS Plus. Um, the evidence base is, is foundational for supporting um, any assumptions along the way, um, for backing the metrics that are being used, and for um, really just substantiating the rigor of the analysis throughout this process. All of this results in three analytic figures. Um, these can be uh, a result of any impact metric that's quantifiable. So the first is looking at the scale, the total impact at a point in time. Um, so for example, the number of individuals that have gained access to clean drinking water in a given year. Secondly, we look at the pace or the change over time. Um, this delta is, is really the essence of impact. So the percent increase in individuals that have access to clean drinking water from one year to the next. And third, we explore efficiency. Um, the amount of impact that's being created per dollar invested. Um, so the number of individuals that have gained that access to clean drinking water um, per $100,000 invested. Each of these provides insight to a slightly different component or aspect of impact. Um, the overall scale of impact, just the significance of what's been achieved, um, that year-on-year -year delta and, and how quickly impact is being generated, how that compares to the need at hand. Um, the efficiency, where to allocate capital so that it's used most effectively. Um, 
we all face certain resource constraints and really need to use each dollar of investment capital as wisely as possible. From this, we gain insight um, into historical performance. Um, so how much impact has happened. Um, the scale figure is especially critical in this regard to really understand how far um, a fund or an investment impact has come, how much impact has already been achieved and, and use that to look retroactively at at what we've accomplished, um, but also to think forward looking, to think about how much impact can happen, um, where where to place capital in the future so that it's as effective as possible. Um, this isn't the same as predictive analytics, but really trying to think about um, how to use past decisions to shape future decisions. And then lastly, this of course comes back to that investment process and thinking about how to interpret um, this information and channel it towards the various decisions that are needed. Um, these are decisions from really start to end. Thinking about how to set and achieve impact goals um, within given parameters. Um, you'll recall this dynamic decision-making model from the top of the session where impact is a critical input, um, but certainly not something that's evaluated fully in isolation. Thinking about which investments have um, a, a great track record and also which ones have great potential to create impact, thinking about the, the potential scale and, and pace of that impact looking forward. Think about areas where um, in active investment management phases where there's underperformance or outperformance and why that might be the case, um, which of course is really critical to shaping your involvement with a given investee at, at various points in time and helping them to optimize for as much impact as possible within whatever constraints there are. And then lastly, considering how and when to exit um, and shaping exits in a way that leaves impact intact um, and really helps support the company and, and ultimately attend stakeholders. Um, I should also mention that naturally another component of all of this is informing reporting, um, reporting to LPs and clients, reporting to the general public, um, and often reporting to one's own staff about what they've accomplished as well. The last thing I'll share um, is that within um, Compass, we have pulled um, and built upon a lot of other external resources. Um, this is partially an effort to avoid reinventing the wheel, um, and partially because there's a tremendous volume of really excellent literature and work already out there. And we're hoping that by pulling this together into one like, easy to access place, it's a little bit easier to, to see how these various pieces connect. Um, and so I've just laid out some of these resources based on the different steps in the, the compass methodology, the different steps in that process. Um, and you'll see how they all start to integrate. I won't go into too much depth here, um, but again, you can certainly access this um, through our research page, Nathan's website, um, and, and peruse at your leisure. Um, with that, I realize a lot of this is still fairly theoretical, and so I'm going to invite um, Nikki Pelzer to share some real-world um, perspective on why we need comparability, what this means um, for Toyota's work. Nikki, over to you. Yes, thank you, Rachel, for the introduction. Um, maybe to start a little bit of background, uh, Triados is uh, also an asset manager, and we manage over 6 billion euros um, assets under management on behalf of both private and institutional investors. And that's invested globally uh, in over 750 direct investments, both listed and, and non-listed. Non and all of those investments have to fit either one or multiple of our impact teams. Um, and then heading straight into why we uh, believe comparing impact uh, performance is really uh, key to impact measurement and management. And I think the first one we have discussed before, and it's a quite an obvious one, it's really key to learn and to understand uh, our impact performance. Having um, a single data point doesn't really tell you anything about the true impact. And is that good or bad? Could it be uh, improving or not? How is your impact over time? How does that compare to what your peers are doing? I think that's really key to understand. Uh, and then so also to manage the impact that you have with your uh, investment. Another aspect is um, I believe that when you're impact investing, 
a key element is really to be transparent about what you do and what your money is doing and what it's not doing. So this comparison is also a very important element in having this transparency on your impact uh, outputs and outcomes. Another one is that it's also important for mainstreaming of impact investing. And I think that goes both for investees. First of all, by having um, data points that are comparable, you need some sort of standard. So for that, Iris Plus is, um, uh, has done a great effort. And that helps, I think, also in being more efficient and having maybe one subset to fill out rather than having 20 or even more from uh, for sort of proprietary tools from various investors. And at the same time, it helps also the investor in, in pinpointing exactly the engagement points and having um, sort of heat maps and uh, where do we feel we should have the discussion with investees on, well, maybe it's a very good uh, performance and we can share those lessons learned with others. Or you feel that there's an area of improvement either compared to peers or over time or compared to other investors and uh, use that data really to have that conversation with, uh, with investees together and have their uh, some sort of learning experience as well. But also for investors, it's key. They are not waiting to hear uh, or to read uh, impact outcomes in uh, tons of different methodologies and not understanding what outcome A in the same thematic uh, area is compared to outcome B of another investor. So having this uh, standardization and really comparison and even benchmarking of impact performance is also really helpful uh, to mainstream impact as they can consider it over time, this is exactly the way to do this for risk and for financial return. However, uh, that being said, it's of course also really challenging in practice. And I think um, uh, one example I can mention is that even though you can collect numerous data points, um, it's really important to have a qualitative assessment as well, because simply said, you cannot capture the full impact always in numbers. Um, then also, do we have uh, all the data available? We notice in practice that sometimes it's really hard to get to outcome level data uh, from investees and uh, output is feasible. Uh, so that also takes time to develop that practice on, on gathering this uh, data that covers outcomes actually. And another one uh, to share is maybe uh, in doing this, you would like to set some sort of target um, to also understand for yourself, uh, well, are you satisfied with the impact or not? And that can also trigger uh, potential adverse incentives. Um, an example could be, uh, will you focus on the number of people um, that you reach with your investments? Well, that can maybe leave uh, um, challenges and the, the quality of those uh, investments. And I think Genevieve actually sh showed a great way with the impact score to, of course, you can set maybe a target on such an impact score so that you gather all the important elements and your target is not then being set on a specific element, but on an overarching score where you can, of course, say, well, this year we, want, we would like to have uh, 80 uh, as a minimum or as a striving uh, target. And then a final one to note, maybe a challenge is uh, the pipeline. It's not like at, uh, at all times you have a bucket of 50 investments available as an asset manager from which you can easily uh, pick and choose that also comes in and goes in, um, in cycles. So it's not e always easy to compare uh, different investments at the same time. And you also have a financial and a risk profile to think about. So it's not a multi-dimensional or a single dimensional uh, uh, impact lens that we can consider when, uh, when investing. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, and even further. So um, when we consider uh, our own uh, road actually to impact management of which this comparison is really key, I think impact has always been in the DNA of, uh, of Triados, uh, of the bank and also of investment management. As they've always considered that the true purpose of investing is really to serve the real needs of, uh, of society. And also for more than 30 years, we have offered only solutions that connect really investors who want to make money work for positive change to those uh, innovative entrepreneurs and sustainable businesses who do actually just that. Um, and over time, we really uh, developed our impact management uh, approach. It was a separate project, 
um, and always having the idea to have it as an integrated element throughout the organization. So multiple people being involved rather than having a dedicated uh, impact team. And through this project, we uh, try to uh, sort of improve um, uh, what we were doing. So an impact report was transformed to an online impact report. Uh, an impact framework was actually set up um, to have some sort of baseline. As, yeah, now it's what you can compare to what the GIN is doing with Compass. Um, and really also to have an active contribution to industry initiatives and help uh, developments of those important uh, standards and tools. And then um, I think if that's left us as what do we do at the moment? So that can be a next slide indeed. That shows an example of uh, one of our listed funds, uh, the Treaters Pioneer Impact Fund that involve, uh, invests in small and mid-cap companies um, linked to one or multiple of our impact teams. And here we do some sort of comparison uh, in terms of the SDGs. So how uh, do our investments uh, in terms of the um, pro revenues of products and services compare um, to the MCI World Small and Mid-Cap Index? And for the non-listed funds, that's actually a bit of a challenge. There we have always worked on, that's the next slide, uh, please. There we have worked on um, um, re increasing, um, um, the quality of our reporting. And this is still um, pretty much focused on outputs at the moment. And we are currently transforming it to, uh, to outcomes, but always uh, made sure that we aligned to uh, industry standards and particularly uh, IRIS uh, for the core metric sets to make sure that when we compare, at least we have a, a decent base uh, to do so and not develop our own set of indicators. That brings us to where we stand uh, today, um, and actually also why I joined uh, Triados. Uh, at the end of last year, they decided as well, this project is working, but it doesn't bring it, uh, us in the pace uh, that we want to, because uh, we also notice now that uh, what we are not good at yet. We do a lot of, of the things right, and definitely with the right intentions, but there's also definitely room for improvement. Um, so I was hired as the impact manager of Triodos uh, Investment Management, and together uh, with me, we set up an impact domain that consists of people from multiple investment teams, marketing communication, investment strategy, uh, really to make sure that um, it's not set up as a separate project, but everyone through the organization is involved and also have a layer around that um, um, working with, with all the teams. And to do that, we really started with a gap analysis uh, from our current state to our ideal state. Um, and there, I think the basis is really uh, impact transparency. And that's also the next slide, uh, where we set up a system uh, that's available on the website and we're currently filling that to really, um, first of all, show all of our investments on the website uh, accessible to everyone uh, with a short description and some data points. Well, that is definitely not a comparison yet. So at the same time, we're developing impact frameworks um, and doing various other activities. And one of those is uh, being part of an effort of, uh, of the GIN in uh, setting up um, a benchmark on how can we actually uh, compare, but also benchmark uh, the impact performance of our financial inclusion investments. But uh, before I give away too much, um, I will leave that uh, uh, to Rachel. Um, yeah, and I do think that that benchmark is really needed to have really better informed decision making. Um, and also again, to engage with our investees, really having the results, not only of our own pool of investments, but also of others, uh, enabling to have that discussion and really uh, pinpoint uh, what is going well and what could be further improved. Um, and to allow for that mainstreaming again. So back to uh, to Rachel. Thank you, Nikki. Um, and I think we have time for a couple of questions and then we will share a little bit more about this um, pretty exciting benchmark that Nikki Stevens has really nicely for. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's a couple of questions here and then uh, yeah, the big, big reveal of the benchmarking efforts. Um, so, for Nikki, you um, thank you for that uh, 
this was a really great real world example of, of applying some of the topics we talked about today. Um, you mentioned that you are uh, currently moving from outputs to outcomes in terms of indicators. Um, and I, you know, I know this can be a, a challenge in a way for investors kind of getting closer to tracking that impact and that, that you intend to contribute to. Um, can you just talk a little bit more about that journey from outputs to outcomes and how Triados is thinking about that? Yeah, sure. That actually start, starts with having, um, so first of all, we had an impact framework for the organization. Uh, and of course, the funds within the documents always had their, their approach, but now we're formalizing that in an impact framework for each fund. And that consists of uh, having a vision on the theme, uh, uh, then also indicating uh, the fund strategy. So with a dedicated theory of change of how with your inputs, do you think you can contribute to your vision for impact? Um, so that also brings in that learning loop. So what I think we did so far is also reporting on outputs uh, and maybe indirectly have a sense of, of uh, self-evaluation, but also bringing that element in and how are we actually uh, doing and what can we improve uh, as also shown previously with, with Compass. And then in doing that, we align and we use actually Iris Plus. Uh, it's a great resource. All the evidence is there. It's aligned to the SAGs, um, their goals, their metrics, and it's also aligned to the impact management projects. So with the, the who, the what, how much that we've all seen uh, before during this presentation. And that's actually a great, great resource to discuss internally. How can you apply that to the vision you have for a particular team? And then at least what we notice is that often that aligns pretty closely to what we intend to do with their investments. So then comes indeed to have that discussion on what is feasible in terms of, of gathering the outputs. Sometimes it's longer term contracts, so it's quite hard to get uh, new data. So it's also sort of a development over time, right? That uh, you transform from what you have into uh, um, the new strategy that you set going forward. Um, and at the moment, we're actually insetting those um, indicators and goals for the funds, also seeing what is feasible um, and then recognizing that there might be some front runners who already have the data available um, and where we can set up some learning experiences on, on how can others track this as well. Great, thank you for that. And there's, um, there's one more question that I may try to uh, see if we can answer in the chat, uh, perhaps so we move, move on to the benchmarking portion if that's if that's okay, uh, but one other, other question for you that we'll see if we can handle that way. Um, and I, the, the question that did come in for Rachel um, was about uh, suggesting any resources to understand performance benchmarks. So I, I may just let you take that question as the next section of this uh, presentation today. Wonderful, yes, thank you so much. Um, so we've talked about standardizing the metrics. We've talked about standardizing the analytics. Um, all of that is, is really great, but um, it's, it's taken us over an hour to cover this. And that's because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of nuts and bolts. There's a lot of components and pieces. Um, and so looking forward, one thing that we're hoping that we can do is to make this simpler, um, to make this more readily accessible and to really expand upon these kind of foundational ingredients to build um, something that's, that's pretty powerful um, and actionable. Um, we've talked about Compass, um, which lays out this analytic methodology. Um, and Compass can help underpin a number of different resources that are still needed to help um, advance and strengthen the impact investing market. Um, building benchmarks, of course, is, is one, and that's one that the GIN has begun to do some, some pretty active work on. Um, there's also a need for more research in some of the drivers on, of impact, um, understanding what voices really do inform and influence those outcomes. Looking at standardized reporting frameworks to make sure we're all speaking the same language consistently and, and comparably. Developing predictive tools and starting to model out what impact is likely to happen or possible to happen. Um, and then, of course, building upon um, the really great progress and verification of processes to also provide verification and assurances of results. 
Um, not all of this is work that the gin will do directly, but we are really um, eager to work together with the thriving market to help advance progress on each front. Um, with that, I will share just a little bit more color in our in our last couple of minutes about these benchmarks. Um, we are actively working with a um, small cohort of of leading impact investors in the financial inclusion space to build a prototype benchmark um, with plans to release this publicly um, in 2022. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, if you're not already signed up for the GINS newsletter, this might be a good opportunity so that you get um, a firsthand insight on that front. Um, what is a benchmark, of course, though, is really the question here, which is um, a set of information that allows you to look at your impact performance compared to market performance and to start to unpack the different peer sets or core features um, within that. It'll include, um, of course, um, direct investment information um, on an annualized basis. And we're not yet benchmarking fund performance, although that's um, hopefully on the horizon. Um, looking at a set of key performance indicators that are really reflective of the target outcomes um, in financial inclusion. Understanding investor contribution. Um, I mentioned this is a kind of core underlying principle to compass, um, and it's similarly a core underlying principle through the benchmark. Um, and then assessing progress relative to the SDGs and, and other science-based targets. Um, really trying to understand if a given investment has an outsized impact, um, is outpacing the progress that's really required, um, or if it needs a little bit more work to get there. Um, all of this comes together into a dynamic, um, interactive display of information that looks at both typical performance as well as the range of performance and distribution um, to get a sense of um, where should one be really aiming and, and what those top quartile impacts look like. Um, exploring the use of lenses, so providing a little bit more color around who is being affected by these different investments. Embedding some dynamic filters, um, looking at how you can kind of reshape the different um, settings and the peer groups so that they're the most relevant to you and to the decision that you're making at any given point in time. And then lastly, looking at some longitudinal analysis, looking at changes over time um, to understand that progress element. I noticed several questions came in throughout the discussion about how this data really comes to life. Um, and this is how, um, it's a really exciting next step for the market um, and one that we're, we're so um, kind of delighted to be working on and really eager to share with all of you once it's available. Um, we still have some hard work to do and so I uh, just invite you to give us a little bit of patience for the next few months, um, but definitely stay tuned. The last thing I'll share is, is just a huge thank you to those organizations that are participating in this. It really is, um, a thought partnership effort to be sure that we're marrying um, ambition and theory with reality. Um, so thanks to Nikki and to, to the many other members of our, our design team on this front. So with that, um, I realize we're, we're at the end of our session, um, but definitely invite you to stay connected and stay involved. Um, Grace mentions that we have additional IRS Plus teams that are under development, and these are all built through um, a very inclusive process with deep um, stakeholder engagement. So you're welcome to provide perspective and input on these as they um, take shape. We also um, invite you to contribute data. Um, we're doing lots of analysis um, all the time to help build out um, the robust resources on impact performance. Um, and then lastly, just get in touch with us. We're always happy to chat, um, answer any questions that you may not have had time to cover today. Um, and to continue staying engaged as we work together um, to deepen the impact um, of impact investing. So with that, thank you again um, so much to our speakers and so much to our hosts um, and so much to all of you for, for spending the last hour and a half with us today. We really appreciate it.